Hey guys, today we are working on a 2005 Honda Odyssey. Customer complaint is the air conditioning doesn't work. So what I'm, I'm gonna do first, start the car, turn the AC on, look at the gauges, see if our compressor clutch is turning. You'll have to forgive these gauges, these are horrible. Uh, my buddy Pete had these hanging up in his shop and uh, they've seen better days. But we need a pressure gauge regardless if it's hard to read. I need to know on any air conditioning system is do I have enough pressure in the system to engage the compressor clutch? So a static, car's not running, pressure reading is what we're looking at. This gauge, it's over 120. Same with this rest pressure. They're really both the same anyway. There is no high side and low side of a system. Again, engine off, compressor's not running, pressures are the same. So it doesn't matter which one you connect to. If you have a gauge for either side of the system, that will help us in this first step. Is, is there enough pressure for this system to engage the clutch? Um, what I want to see, today's temperature outside, it's about 90. And what I want to see is a pressure that's around 90 PSI. I keep forgetting I have an international audience, so we use degree Fahrenheit here. That number that I gave you um, was in Fahrenheit, 90 degrees, 90 PSI. And, and that has to do with the pressure temperature relationship of this particular refrigerant. We won't get into that for this video. Maybe I'll do a series coming up soon on air conditioning systems. I used to teach that class at the college as well. And uh, I can fill you in on pressure temperature relationships and saturated vapor and things like that. But for us, for now, what we care about, is there enough pressure in this for the, the clutch to engage? And the answer is yes. I think anything over 60 or 70 PSI would be enough to trip the low pressure switch and let the clutch run. Something I just heard as I turned the air on, see if you guys can hear it. Hear the idle, idle speed pickup. Listen to it again. I'll show it to you on the tack. This is actually answering a lot of questions for me right now as far as what things we need to check. All right, that's cool. And so what that means is the inputs are there. This switch is fine. The inputs are getting from this controller to my engine computer telling my engine computer that I am requesting the clutch. That's what this little RPM rise tells me. That's awesome. Normally you don't get that type of feedback, but let's use it if we have it. I mean, that'll actually aid you in not having to maybe connect a scan tool for, you know, checking your inputs there. We can do that. We have the ability, but that was a cool test, unanticipated. All right, so let's go under the hood and I'll show you two different ways to identify whether or not that clutch is engaged. Okay, so the first thing you want to look at, or the first thing you can look at, because we already had a set of manifold gauges connected, is we can look at our low side pressures and our high side pressures. Low side should be cycling, and the high side should be rising as that compressor engages. All right, but the fact that this low side's not cycling and the high side's not moving, that's telling you the clutch is not engaging and uh, you know we have enough pressure, the input's there, at least the main input. One more piece you can use is the clutch itself. I'm not sure I can show it, I'll try. Okay, you can see the belt, it's spinning around the pulley. And then um, I'll tell you what, the part that I'm going to highlight right here in this video is the part that should be spinning the same rotation as that serpentine belt, that black belt that's moving on the top. It should be spinning the same speed as that when that clutch is engaged. And again, this is another way that you can identify whether or not your compressor is turning. So here's my thoughts. We, um, I believe we have an output problem. I'm not sure yet, I might be wrong. And by output, I'm saying something relay, wiring between relay and clutch, or the clutch itself, something on the output side of the circuit. The fact that we're getting an idle speed increase says the computer likes what it's seeing in anticipation of this load. And so that means to me, probably the low side, high side pressure, whatever sensors they're using, the EVAP core temperature, if they use that, um, the AC switch inside, all of that, to me, that idle speed rise says that those are good. Um, I, I think the next place to go for sure is let's go to the relay and see if we're getting a command signal from the computer 
to the relay to turn it on. All right, so I was thinking off camera uh, that I need to go grab a wiring diagram and see you know, what kind of controls are on this thing, uh, but I don't yet. I'm, I'm going to go right to this box, and fortunately Honda, unlike Ford, um, gives me a description of all of this. And so we have um, right there, it says MG clutch. And that is most likely my magnetic clutch for my AC system. So that is, I believe that is a relay too. Darn it. That is just a fuse, guys. That 7.5 magnetic clutch. Well, we could check the fuse. I always get that from you guys. Why don't you check the fuse? <sighs> Not all of you. <laughs> Some of you. If I check the fuse first... If the AC doesn't work on a car and you check the fuse and it's blown, there you go. Change the fuse. You know, you got a reason that fuse is blowing, but anybody can do that. We're going beyond fuses here on this channel. You got a fuse that's fine and you want to know how to troubleshoot, then you need to be here. doesn't matter what your skill set is or how long you've been doing this. I can teach you. I promise. Just taking my test light to a known good ground. Then just touching on the pin itself outside of this fuse. And then on the other side, and you wanna make sure it's lit on both sides. If it's lit on one side, you have a blown fuse. All right, so the fuse is fine. Next thing I need to do is I need to locate this relay and it looks like I might need a wiring diagram now at this point to be able to do that. In the quest to find this relay, uh, I am still in search of a wiring diagram. Looks like our internet connection is down right now, uh, which is putting a damper on things for sure. Uh, but the reason I, want, I wanted to, to um, turn the camera back on and fill, fill you in on this one piece before I figure out direction is I'm going after the relay next because I can't get down easily to this AC compressor for where the power and ground would be connected to it. Um, that would be a great place to start because it could just be a bad clutch. I've seen that. Um, but getting to the wiring I don't think is, is going to be very fun. Um, another one that will actually work at times is smacking on the front of the AC clutch itself with just like a long pry bar. And um, you know, what happens with that is if it energizes, then what that is is a weak clutch. Uh, and it's funny, I was just watching my friend Eric O from South Main Auto, and I think he shows that same test that I'm talking about. In fact, I'll throw a link in here for his video um, where he used a screwdriver, tapped on the clutch itself and uh, again showing a weak field tell you what i'll do for this i'll keep you guys focused on the manifold gauges watch this left one over here and while i'm tapping on that clutch because I, I definitely can't get you in there at the same time as me okay ac is still on might as well do this test first this tap on it test nope Definitely not that in this case. So it's a good test. I've used it for many years myself. Again, if that clutch would have engaged after tapping on the front of it, uh, that tells you, you your clutch pretty much needs to be replaced. It may be worth doing a power and ground check on that. You know, you could have an issue with corrosion in a wire for sure. But uh, every time I've seen that, it was a bad clutch. All right, so I'm going scan tool next. What I want to go to, definitely the engine computer. That would that would be where my AC controls are are, are going to be. Now there there may have been a climate control or body control computer. We could look at some other stuff, but as far as the output side goes of an AC system, the engine computer is the one that's responsible for turning the AC clutch uh, relay on and off. So I'm actually I'm actually going to go right to the functional tests see what kind of functional test I have there we go right top left AC clutch all right so uh, this is the difference um, where uh, you guys that are do-it-yourselfers are, are looking at this and saying man I I uh, don't have the tool to do that 
you know, I, I get that comment a lot. I don't have a $10,000 tool to do what you're doing. Well, you don't need a $10,000 tool. Um, you can get a bi-directional scan tool for maybe, maybe in, the, in the range of $1,500. Um, you guys can help me out on that. I've really only dealt with two types of scan tools my whole career. I get this a lot from you guys too. Hey, can you tell me about the Autel? Can you tell me about the launch? Can you tell me about this? And I, I can't because to be honest, I've used two professional scan tools, OTC and snap one. That's it, my entire career. So um, I'll do the best I can. Uh, you guys, as my subscribers, help each other, you know, comment back, you know, what, what's a good bi-directional scan tool that will give the do it yourself or this kind of capability. This test that I'm about to do is, is huge that I can have this ability. So what I want to do, you see at the top, it says to te uh, this test operates the AC clutch manually. Do you wish to continue? And the answer is yes, I do. Uh, activates the AC compressor clutch relay. Test enable condition. Ignition switch on. Do not start the engine. So activates the compressor clutch relay. And that, what that's gonna do is that's outside of any input that we have on this system. The scan tool acts as the input and we just command the output. So if this clutch turns on and runs when I do this test, then we have an input problem. That's what this test is gonna tell me. And I know what we're leaning towards. Again, I don't think this test is gonna work because I don't think we have an input problem. I still wanna do it. I have the ability, um, come full circle here all of this leading me down this path because I don't know where the relay is on this offhand I don't have a wiring diagram with me and I'm looking for another direction to go for a while can we back up and go that way too yeah and I think the longer I teach the more I realize how key that is is knowing when to uh, stop in one direction back up go another direction because for now it's easier okay that's what I'm doing that's actually a little bit helpful to um, turn the engine off because I can hear better. Uh, what I was hoping for though is I could do it running and then I could just simply turn these gauges around, let you guys look at the needles on the gauges while I hit engage and that would tell us, um, would tell you guys that the clutch is either turning on or not. Uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna have to use my ear and then maybe get you guys over there. Okay, good. I hear a relay clicking, but I hear no clutch engage it. Let's take a listen. Can feel for it here. I think it's this one. No, it's this one. That one right there. Here, I'll let you guys hear it. Okay, so clutch, what can we do? Let's talk about them first. Uh, one, we could put a amp clamp in here. So we could put a loop between the load side pins of this relay and we could measure current flow to the clutch itself. So if we have current flow going to the clutch, that means we don't really need to check our powers and grounds. And what I've found on average from doing these in the past guys, is around um, two to four amps, somewhere in that range, that you'll have the clutch um, running at, I think. It's been a while. Two to four, two to three amps, one to two amps. <laughs> How about one to four? Um, so we could do that test. And let's say I had two amps on that measurement, that would tell me I'm done and it needs an AC clutch. Um, another one would be to check the load side, uh, load side pins themselves and see what kind of voltages I have because we could have uh, say a voltage drop problem going into this relay so, uh, from say a wire over here that feeds in this way before it goes down to the clutch we could have a wiring problem there. Um, what else? Or we could be good up here voltage wise and then I would be forced and I still might be no matter what I do and this is the one I'm trying to avoid I might be forced to go down to that clutch connector and do my measurements there to be 100%. If you wanted to roll the dice, which I'm not a fan of doing, do your checks at the relay. If all of your relay's uh, pins check good, then that tells you most likely 
you have a faulty clutch and the only other thing would be wiring in between. It can happen, but it's not as common. What else? We could do continuity checks from up here down to the clutch. So I could pull this out, I could measure the clutch feed wire to ground and then see what type of continuity I have through the circuit. That would actually be a helpful test maybe here. I don't use the ohm meter much. Okay, th those are, if I keep talking, I'm gonna forget the test that I said. I should have been writing those down. What do I wanna do? I'm trying to avoid that bottom test. I want to do some checks up here at this relay is what I want to do. Voltage checks. As a rule, when it comes to these relays, we are looking for uh, two power feeds. We're going to have a load side and a control side. So looking at this guy, um, the control sides, they're numbered sometimes. No, this is not labeled at all. All right, so this is pretty standard pattern though. You see how that you have two smaller pins? See the width of that pin compared to the width of that? So this is your load side. This is your heavy current side that's protected by that 7.5 amp fuse. And then this is your computer control side of this relay. One of these two goes to a ground, the other goes to a power, and the computer can control either side. It won't control both, just one. And um, so I want to have one power feed up here and I want to have one power feed down here. One of these two will have power and one of these two will have power. Um, there's a variable there. That would be if the computer controls the power up here, I would need to turn the relay on before we would have power show up in one of these locations. So just some quick voltage measurements. We'll go control side first. 1182, it's because my battery's weak. This cooling fan's been running for a while. As I film this side, that's showing zero volts. You no, know, you guys aren't probably seeing that well. Um, so the first one, I'm on this one. Probably can see this. And I'm not, I'm not stuffing that in there either, just laying it there gently. You don't want to stuff your test leads in these terminals. You'll spread the female terminals apart. Uh, the one I'm testing would be, flip it upside down, is this one right here. That one has 12 volts. So what that means is this one, this control side, jump this over one. That's my computer wire. That's the one the computer controls. So remember the right side of the car passenger side up top that is a computer controlled ground all right so i have one control side power that i need and now i'm doing the load side so i'm now touching this pin right here in the middle and one more there's my second power feed uh, this is looking more and more like a faulty clutch as we go all right so this wire let's let's uh show you another test here and this should be very easy to follow. If I connect my test light to battery positive, and I connect my test light to ground, which is just stabbing the paint here on the frame, um, I found a ground to my light lights, right? And what we said was this terminal here, the side for, or closest to me, it's a little goofy when you're thinking backwards. You gotta be careful with that, especially when you're jumping pins. You know, you're looking at a relay and you know, we could jump these two load side pins together and make the clutch turn on if, if we had a control side problem. I don't believe we do, but the point is you can get in trouble. If you accidentally jump the control side, you'll fry a computer. So you guys that like to jump relays, um, you might wanna think twice about that. Better know what you're doing, that's for sure. All right, so if I'm correct in my analogy of the circuit, when I go back to my, my scan tool, should still be set up for that. Connect this to this terminal. All right, watch. So that test light lighting? Yeah, baby. Yeah, buddy. So 
this is what you would do guys if you had a maybe a relay that wasn't functioning we know ours is because it's clicking uh, we still have to address the load side I said that before but what I'm talking about right now is controls let's say you have a, a relay that's not clicking what that means is you have a control issue and man how cool is that that I could take the scan tool and command this output to turn on and off um, if you didn't have this ability and let's say that it was off all the time you would have to manually check all of the inputs that this system uses before you could condemn say a computer or something like that and um, yeah so uh, there's, this can be a little bit intimidating I get that but it's not hard just keep following what I'm doing man I'm telling you I can teach you this stuff you do not need a ten thousand dollar scan tool all right control is good now we need to address our load side guys so our load side circuit is the two heavy pins and um, there's a couple ways I can do that all right so I, I'm, I'm conflicted here and what I want to show you guys next um, I have a tool for this this is a a tool that has actually allowed me to be very safe in this next test I know that I could jump the load side of this you guys could do that you could take a loop like this put two two uh, female terminals on it and jump the two load side contacts okay you could do that you do it wrong again you cook the computer so um, you know maybe you do it wrong by jumping the wrong pins I, I know my design here but so let's just be safe all right this is a tool that I can use to manually um, turn that load side switch on for the basically what I'm doing is it takes the place of the relay so when I hit the on button here um, I now have current flow passing from one terminal to the other but the nice thing about the tool is it provides me a current loop that I can do an amperage measurement here uh, for that clutch so um, yeah and it's got its own 15 amp little internal fuse there too which is pretty cool um, I, I need an amperage measurement here and we'll, we'll stay with the regular multimeter we'll use our amp clamp with our regular multimeter Let's see what it shows us all right so what I want to do is I want to take the top of my my unit so this would be uh, you guys with your regular multimeter what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your red and your black lead so this is the tool that I'm showing you um, this is a snap-on unit these things probably go uh, they're actually ridiculously priced maybe three three fifty or something like that um, but you can go on a site uh, a company that I use that actually sells my paper book for me it's um, www.aeswave.com they sell a generic inductive amp clamp for maybe around 90 bucks right um, and I'm sure there's other companies that sell them too but uh, that's one that I definitely know because I tell my students about it all the time and so you can get that amp clamp go right to your regular multimeter and so your your red lead would go to your your um, volt amp ohm port and then your black lead would go to the com port okay and then there'd be settings on your amp clamp and we have to do a little bit of math when we use this on a regular multimeter my scope has conversions in there that I could select the scope and go to the amp probe and it does the math for me but when it comes to um, just using it for a regular multimeter like I am right now even on my scope I need to do the math some simple math with this first one we'll leave it alone from there we could talk a lot about this 20 amps okay is the setting I'm choosing uh, what we want to look at is that decimal point right there and then if it says 0.1 that would be one amp okay 0.2 be two amps 0.3 would be three amps so let's do the test what we want to do is we want to zero that amp probe before we connect it to the circuit okay so zero your amp probe connect it we got nothing that's not what I hoped for okay the reason I didn't hope for that guys is um, I I wanted to read amperage here and the reason I wanted to read amperage here is that means my testing is done I'd be done if I read amperage and um, the reason for that is we know the feed well let's do this too let's make sure see we can 
use this tool for other cool things too. Watch this, I'll show you some more. I can, and I forget sometimes that I can do this stuff with this. Let's pick this thing up a little bit more often. All right, so I have leads on the top here too, which is, is going to allow me to, um, it actually shows it on the picture, I'll show it to you. It shows um, the two leads up top, so the red, the red and the green, that that is on the load side. See, it goes through the loop, and it's on the load side switch, okay? It also gives me a place I can read, wait a minute, current loop, and then one and two I can read it on. Okay, I'm just getting familiar with the diagram. So that diagram is telling you that these, these inputs, uh, one and two, that's these guys up here, okay? So I'm actually measuring, I'm actually measuring the voltage coming in and going out of that circuit with this switch closed. Okay, so close the switch. Don't have to worry about the relay anymore. This is my relay. Do a voltage measurement here, right? And here, let's make sure my test light is got a good ground. It does not. Preaching that all the time, gotta check our light. can't use our light without a good ground. Now, something else to be clear, guys, as soon as you find a good ground, when you check your light, you know, the reason you're not checking, the reason you're checking your light is not to make sure that the light works. You know the light works. This light, this same bulb I've had in here for 10 years. Um, I'm checking my light to make sure that my ground is good. So now, when I do my testing, I don't have to think about that anymore. All right, so switch is on up top. We, this should be lit on both sides. Good and good. So what that tells me, and that's an important test. It's a variable you have to think of. What that tells me is my load side feed coming into this, coming into this, that my load side feed is good during a loaded circuit situation. Now there's a variable, even if that coil was open, it's not a feed side problem. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm saying that because there's someone out there that's thinking right now, that circuit's not loaded if that clutch is open. You'd be correct. But if my clutch is open, right, that's my problem with this circuit. I'm not gonna have a feed side problem the same time, the same exact time that I have an open clutch coil. So how's my feed regardless if this circuit is truly loaded or not how is my feed it is good what's what's nice now guys we're getting close to the end all we have to address is the wiring from here down to the clutch and then the clutch to ground almost forgot no amperage we have an open that open is not my feed side of my circuit feed side's good so i gotta check the wire from the relay down to the clutch i gotta check the clutch ground next Uh, I guess I'm trying to think how I want to do that. Um, let me ask you guys a question. You guys that are following along what I'm trying to teach you here. Um, the fact that I have no amperage here on this measurement. Um, what do you guys think about ohming the circuit to ground? Would it help me at all to measure from this relay contact down to the clutch to ground? And I, I say no it's gonna show us an open circuit because I have no current flow. So that test is not gonna help me in this situation. Maybe in some other situations, if you had a feed side problem that I was just describing to you that was causing the zero amp problem, if you disconnected this, you could measure, figure out which one's going down to the clutch. And what you do is you take your, your multimeter lead on that pin and then you'd go to ground and then you'd want to read a few ohms, I don't know how many, maybe 10 ohms, 10 ohms, five ohms, five ohm coil. They're very low ohm coils. Um, if you read that, that would tell you that circuit's intact down there and you're zero amp reading, you might want to rethink what you're, what you're going after. So that's a good test, but it's not necessary in this case. It's one that I don't hardly use because no amperage says my problem's that way. 
No amperage, good feed up top. My problem is that way for sure. And ohming that way is just gonna tell me what I already know. I just wish the clutch was easy to get to. We'd be done already. We'd be done a long time ago, but this is, this is, uh, this is good. I think this need, I think this needs a clutch, Pete. You could change just that clutch? I don't know, Pete. Um, in fact, what I, what I can't do at this point, um, this is still rolling and I kind of need this. Um, I can't get to the wiring on that clutch at all from where I am right out here. So everything's good coming into this, like the computer's control and the relay, the relay is good. And um, I have either, there's two poss three possibilities, either an open between here and the clutch, which is really unlikely. Uh, the clutch coil itself or the ground of the clutch to the block, that's it, that's, that's where I'm at. It's, for me to narrow those three down, I think I need to go underneath, take that panel off the bottom so I can get to the wiring on the AC clutch itself. Think we can do it. cardboard I could lay on, maybe you take it, it off. On yeah, I mean I'd like to do it on on the Tim's lift. Doing that starter right now, that one so when he's done, can we put this up on the lift yeah. so I can do that final check and then I'll get mm -hmm. that last piece. Alright, so you guys were paying attention to that conversation. Um that's what we're gonna do so I can do this final check. You can see why I avoided that check the whole way through this. Uh was hoping we'd find problems along the way. Nice thing for you guys is this will be one that you can apply across the board with electrical troubleshooting when it comes to relays in general. So it was definitely worth doing, maybe in this case, the long way around. Um, I think, as I stated before, if this clutch was easy to get to, I would have started the vehicle, turn the AC on, look at my gauges, and then do a quick power and ground check next at the clutch. If we could have done that in that order, we'd be done, right? Uh, we would have found, I believe, we're going to find a power and a ground on this clutch. Now, may, I might eat my words if we're wrong. And, you know, maybe for this video, that would be awesome because, you know, it's maybe a 1 in 10 chance that I have an open between this relay box and that clutch or an open in the ground to the block. But to show that, it happens. And that's why we, we do these um, uh, tests thoroughly on all the way through. We don't skip a step, even at the end when it looks like it's the clutch, we don't want to skip a step. Hey, if this is your car, if this is your car, what are you going to do? That's what you need to ask yourself. You know, it doesn't matter that you're in the field, you want to roll the dice, you're busy. This last test it will take you an extra 10 minutes, but it's worth it. We got to put this car up in the air. We got to drop that bottom panel so I can get to the wiring at the clutch. Okay, guys, you have no idea how difficult it is for me to get this shot. Um, I have two wires. There's your two wires going to the clutch. So I'm using a, an inspection mirror that's above the uh, compressor. Uh, one of the two wires goes to a little stud. Can I show you that? I don't know. All right, you see the one go into the top. Uh, the one that's in this plastic clip closest to me that comes around the compressor and actually comes up near the rad. The other wire is your ground. You can see those wires are intact i was tugging on them they're not broken uh to get a, a set of test leads up there is not going to happen i mean i have hook tools that i could do it but i'm not going to i'm going to take one voltage measurement on this harness up by the the uh radiator and uh that'll be my final my final check i i know some of you maybe the whole time i was outside were screaming at at me to check the wire on the side of the cooling fan if you if you look at uh it's this connector right here right right where i'm pointing so there is a connector right there on the fan that's where i'm going to do my measurement and that is a place that could be corroded so really what i need to do is on the far side i need to do a voltage measurement on that side of that connector to make sure that that connector isn't bad and then after that we'll put a clutch in it that ground circuit I'm not hooking underneath there, no reason to. That ground circuit isn't intact. Um, it's really just this last measurement here, and this is probably even overkill too, as far as making the call. Pretty sure this needs a clutch. Okay guys, uh, I'm uh, using a tool to access that wire because I can't get to the connector really. This is a, uh, this is that fills uh, I forget the name of this tool. I'll have to get you a, a, a link in this description. Pretty sweet tool for what I'm using it for right now. Um, so I am basically piercing the wire and 
getting a voltage reading down on the really as close to the clutch as, as I can get. I could probably go lower, but you know, it's really not necessary. This needs a clutch open in the in the ground circuit. Um, what I'm doing, guys, is the test I showed you before with my switch, right? We know our power is getting down there. Can't really check that ground. Um, I need to show it to you. I I'm gonna hook those two. It's not something you guys will be able to do without some, some tools. It's a case where you do not have a choice. You have to poke a hole in a wire. That's exactly what I'm doing here. Small hole, of course, we'll fix it. Little bit of liquid electrical tape made by Permatex. It's like five bucks for some of that stuff. Um, so no big deal there. I'm gonna try getting underneath for you guys. All right, now I am on the bottom side of this connector, guys, and we'll do the same test. This will address that connector right there and whether or not it is intact. Getting above the AC compressor will be a little bit tricky. Um, the rest of this, and, and again, I'm just being thorough, showing you the way that this should be done. Hey, um, Tim, can you flip that switch on that tool for me? You know where you stuck that fake that fake spider again that I didn't yeah. get switch freaked out this time? To just on? yeah, just flip it to on. on. Sweet and off. off. One more time. On. And off. off. Okay, good. So our wiring is good all the way down here. Uh, the last the last piece would be to try to grab it up top and get a, a reading on that ground wire and maybe that power wire right there but everything else is good at this point what you can do just tug on the wiring from where we are where we tested here to the top of this and make sure that you can't pull it apart and if you cannot for where we are and all the tests that we've done that's confirmed faulty clutch it's an open in this coil for this AC, AC clutch so as far as the repair goes um, it's going to depend on how much a clutch costs compared to how much a compressor costs. Either way, the compressor is coming out of this vehicle, and uh, what's the, with the mileage on this thing? Maybe 150,000. I'm not sure what the mileage is. I probably would do the whole compressor uh, myself, but uh, I'll leave that up to Pete and what he wants to do. This final test, guys, is the ground circuit. Pretty tough to show you the shot. I'm mean, hooked into this ground wire here, guys. But this is my final test. Hey, Tim. Can you flip this switch for me again? Yeah. What we want to do is we want to load the circuit. It's on right now. Just flip it on and off a couple times. So he's turning it on and off. Notice the light is staying off. That is a good ground on this AC compressor. Thank you, Tim. I'll try to hook this wire right there on the power side too and show you that we're done with this circuit. It needs a clutch. Okay guys, um, there is no reason for me to go any closer to the AC clutch than that connector where I checked the power wire before because that all gets replaced with the clutch. That's part of the clutch assembly is where it plugs into that circuit right there. So we are done. That is confirmed open coil in the AC clutch. Uh, of course, with that being up top, it would have been a lot simpler to identify. Remember that all of these procedures that I showed for this can be applied to any output circuit that's relay controlled. It's all the same. The fundamentals are the same. So I totally forgot at the end of this video, I showed the rest of this using the test light and not my multimeter. I started off with the multimeter, ended with the test light. Uh, maybe some of you can appreciate that. Um, I was doing multiple cars here today and, and the one I just did fully with the test light and just kind of got lost in which one I was doing. but. Same thing applies. The test light is bright on the feed side with the circuit loaded. That's with that switch on. Feed side's good. Test light does not light on the ground. Uh, that is a good ground. If that ground was bad, that test light would light. So um, I can refer you to a, a, a video that I've done, which is a, a, a bad block ground uh, on a Nissan that uh, I'm showing the test light is lit on the ground of the car. So that's what a bad ground looks like. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. And uh, I really am done this time. This uh, is a wrap, faulty AC compressor, clutch. Almost said compressor, just the clutch, the electrical part.